illustrious group of colleagues uh, on both sides of the Capitol uh, to, uh, to promote uh, a, a comprehensive reform uh, to our immigration uh, system. We're here today because last November, 80 million Americans voted against Donald Trump and against everything he stood for. They voted to restore common sense, compassion, and competence in our government. And part of that mandate is fixing our immigration system, which is a cornerstone of uh, Trump's hateful horror show. Now, I have worked on this issue for nearly 30 years. I've introduced my own legislation. I've teamed up with champions like the late Senator Kennedy in 2006. When I first came to the Senate, I was part of the Gang of Eight that in 2013 passed a bipartisan comprehensive immigration bill through the Senate with 68 votes. The reason we have not gotten immigration reform over the finish line is not because of a lack of will. It is because time and time again, we have compromised too much and capitulated too quickly to fringe voices who have refused to accept the humanity and contributions of immigrants to our country and dismiss everything, no matter how uh, significant it is in terms of the national security as amnesty. From John Boehner, who blocked comprehensive reform from reaching the House floor, to white nationalists like Steve King and Jeff Sessions, to a manipulative, manipulative madman named Donald Trump, there will always be those who stand against immigrants, believing reform is somehow a political loss to Republicans and not a win for the United States of America. Well, to my Republican colleagues, I say this, stop pretending like you know the political outcomes of immigration reform. When it comes to the Latino vote especially, I think this last election proved we are not owned by any one party. But we are the largest racial and ethnic minority in the country, and our votes should matter more to you than those who stormed the Capitol on January 6. And to my Democratic colleagues, who I hope will join us as co-sponsor in the coming days, and we already have many, I also have a message. We have an economic and moral imperative to pass big, bold, and inclusive immigration reform, reform that leaves no one behind. Not our dreamers and TPS holders, not our farm workers and meat packers, not our essential workers, and not our parents, friends, and neighbors. What the immigrant community was just put through those past four years was beyond cruel. Trump assailed dreamers and TPS holders to strip their legal status. He slashed legal channels of immigration into our country. He stole from our military to pour billions into an ineffective border wall. And instead of addressing the root causes of migration, he cut off aid to Central America. He desecrated our reputation on the world stage by imposing cruel policies that literally tore babies out of their mother's arms, caged children, permanently separated hundreds of families, and turned Lady Liberty's back on refugees yearning for peace, security, and opportunity. But undoing Trump's damage and passing minor reforms is not enough. Our current system is riddled with inefficiencies and needless cruelties. Under the status quo, we still prevent family members from reuniting legally in the United States because of lengthy backlogs and delays. We still send graduates educated in our great universities back to their home countries instead of allowing them to drive innovation here in America. And we still make it too hard for companies to hire the workers they need to innovate and force American workers to compete with exploited undocumented labor. That's why we today collectively are introducing the US Citizenship Act in the Senate and the House, legislation that brings to life President Biden's plan to restore humanity and American values to our immigration system. It's our vision. It's our vision of what immigration reform should look like. And it's a bill we can all be proud of. It will modernize our system, offer a path to citizenship for hardworking people in our communities, reunite families, increase opportunities for legal immigration, and ensure America remains a powerhouse for innovation and a beacon of hope to refugees around the world. I can tell you as the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that I must say that beyond enhancing security, 
and improving management of the southern border, our legislation also finally addresses the push factors, forcing so many families to flee Central America in the first place. Transnational crime, violence, corruption, poverty, lawlessness. The prior administration's naive fixation on the wall failed to alleviate these horrific conditions. We must address the underlying root causes driving migration and create safer processes for those in danger to apply for asylum. That's how we stop ourselves from winding up in the exact same place down the road. And that's what this bill does. Now, there are some in Congress, I'll say from both parties, who argue against going big on immigration reform. Some still believe the answer lies in blocking all legal channels of our immigration system until we get our house in order. Others say we should leave the bigger, tougher questions for another day pursuing narrow reforms that nibble at the edges and leave millions of people behind. Personally, I couldn't disagree more with both approaches. Our system is broken. We have 11 million undocumented people living, working, and raising families in our communities without legal status. These are good and decent people who believe in the promise of America down to their bones. They did not come here for handouts. They came here for hard work. And that's exactly what they do each and every day. They work really hard. They pick our fruit, they pack our meat, they keep our food supply strong, even in times of crisis like this pandemic. They are essential workers, so essential that our economy would not function without them. Yet they live under constant fear of deportation. It's time to bring all 11 million undocumented out of the shadows given the opportunity to pass criminal background and national security checks, secure lawful prospective immigrant status, and eventually apply for green cards after eight years uh, in which they begin the process. The bill provides an expedited, expedited path for dreamers, TPS holders, and farm workers. I love our dreamers. They are as American as apple pie. In New Jersey alone, there are about 9,000 American-born U.S. citizen children who call a TPS holder mom or dad. And nationwide, at least 5.9 million American children have an undocumented parent. This legislation lives up to the conviction that families belong together. And finally, to those who want to call this bill amnesty, I know there are some, 10 angels could come swearing from above that this is the best tailored legislation, that it will secure our border, regularize our system, and they would say, no, it's amnesty. They will never be satisfied. These politicians and pundits who preach xenophobia and hate, uh, I say this, preserving the status quo deprives our country of economic benefits that come with inclusive and lasting immigration reform. CBO economists projected the 2013 Comprehensive Immigration Reform Bill I helped write would have reduced the deficit by $850 billion over 20 years. It would have grown our economy by nearly one and a half trillion dollars within a decade. And it would have added $300 billion to the Social Security Trust Fund while raising wages for all American workers. So uh, I know that many are thinking, does this bill have any chance of passing the Senate with 60 votes? And the answer is, we won't know until we try. We Democrats are putting forward President Biden's vision for immigration reform because we believe it is the right vision for immigration reform. We know the path forward will demand negotiations uh, with others, but we are not going to make concessions out of the gate. We are not going to start with 2 million undocumented people instead of 11 million. We will never win an argument that we don't have the courage to make. We will do the righteous thing and make our case for bold, inclusive, and lasting immigration reform. And we will have, as we have seen in poll after poll, the vast majority of Americans standing with us. We have to stand up for what we believe in and see what the path unfolds as we move this legislation forward. Uh, that does not mean that it's all or nothing but it certainly means that we are looking for robust immigration reform. 
and I'm proud to have a distinguished group of colleagues in major positions to make this happen uh, in both sides of the Capitol. And uh, let me turn to, to my distinguished colleague who is leading the fight in the House of Representatives, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez. Thank you, Senator Menendez, and good morning, everyone. I am so honored to be partnering with uh, Senator Menendez on this effort. Um, I'm very proud to introduce the U.S. Citizenship Act in the House of Representatives today. Um, but before I begin, I want to thank President Biden for his leadership. The president promised he would send a bill to Congress on day one, and he did. I also want to give a special shout out to my closers. Those are my colleagues and partners in the House on this endeavor. When a team needs to win a game, they send in their closer. Well, I've got seven of them. And we intend to work together to pass fair immigration legislation that strengthens America. Today, we are turning the page. We are writing the next chapter in our shared story. For many of us here today, immigration reform is intensely personal. I am the daughter of immigrant parents from Mexico. They came to this country and they worked hard and they sacrificed every day to provide for me and my brothers and sisters. My father, Ignacio, was an industrial mechanic, and my mother, Maria, became an elementary school teacher. But before that, she raised a family and helped supplement my dad's income by selling Avon and even cleaning houses to make ends meet. My parents didn't know that they would someday send not just one, but two daughters to the United States Congress. But they put it all on the line just to build a better life for their family. And their story is like the story of so many others. That is why I've dedicated my career to building an immigration system that lets people live without fear. A system that gives anyone willing to work hard and contribute to our nation the opportunity to build a better life for themselves and for their family. Only in America can we see the son and the daughter of immigrant parents join together in the United States Capitol to announce a bold vision to bring our outdated, broken down immigration system in line with the values that make this country great. These are the very same values that brought our parents here. I am very proud to play a role in the effort to finally deliver on immigration reform. For the past two years, I've served as the chair of the Immigration Task Force for the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. And together we developed a framework that informs the plan that we are unveiling today. One that preserves our values, that strengthens our economy and provides fair protections for immigrants and communities. Most importantly, it does right by all of those who are proud to call this country their home. In the last Congress, the House was able to advance solutions for dreamers, farm workers, and more. In this Congress, I believe that the House and the Senate can deliver legislation to the president's desk. Today, we have an administration and a president that understands that the success of our country is interwoven and linked to the success of our immigrant communities. And it is time that we finally put in place an immigration system that's based on that reality. Immigrants are good for our communities, for our economy, and for our country. First and foremost, this immigration reform legislation provides hardworking people and families who have lived here for years, in some cases for decades, an opportunity for them to earn their citizenship. When families are strong, America is stronger. We must reunite and keep families together. The U.S. Citizenship Act will help grow our economy. Fixing our broken immigration system will increase worker productivity, create more jobs, improve the wages of all workers, and reduce our deficit. And if you don't believe me, just ask any economist. The bill will modernize our border region and our ports of entry. The U.S. Citizenship Act will reset U.S. border policy to focus on smarter solutions and responsible, effective border management. Our border policy is broken, period. But this bill employs a multi-pronged approach that will manage the border, address the root causes of migration, crack down on bad actors, and create safe and legal channels for those who are seeking protection. It's smart, it's focused, and it's responsible. 
and it's long overdue. So why now? How will we get this done? Our country seems more divided than ever. And sometimes it seems that cynicism can defeat us before we even try. I get it, I really do. Congress has tried and failed in the past and we aren't naive about the challenges that we face, but this time can and could be different. It should be different. I know that this is the year for Congress to act. The CHC, the closers, Senator Menendez, his, um, his supporters in the Senate and the president, we are all ready. We have been preparing for this moment. There is a broad coalition that wants to deliver on real reform. We're seeing a genuine interest across the board in finally getting something done. And that's because we understand that immigration reform isn't just a collection of policies or debates in Washington. It could mean the full realization of the American dream for millions of families in every community in this country. They are our teachers, our classmates, entrepreneurs and small business owners, parents, students, members of the military who take an oath to defend us. They are our neighbors and yes, they are the essential workers that are carrying our community during this COVID crisis. They deserve the opportunity to succeed. They deserve permanent relief and they deserve the opportunity to fully contribute to the place that they already love and call home. This time, we are going to get it done. The next chapter of our shared story is really just beginning. And I wanna thank again, everybody who is here supporting the president's vision for finally fixing what is long overdue. Thank you so much. And with that, I will turn it back over to Senator Menendez. Hi everyone, this is Robert from Senator Menendez's office. So our, ne our next speaker will be Senator Padilla from California. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, uh, Senator Menendez, Representative Sanchez, and all of our colleagues uh, that are part of this uh, a big, important announcement today. Uh, for too long, our immigration system has failed to live up to the ideals and the principles that our nation was founded on. And so, yes, it is time to enact bold, robust immigration reform that meets the urgency of the moment, uh, the urgency that this moment demands and that millions of hardworking immigrants have earned. As uh, the son of immigrants as well, my parents are from Mexico, I am proud to join Senator Menendez uh, and all the uh, co-sponsors on this legislation to restore humanity to our immigration system and give everyone a shot at achieving the American dream. Uh, es un honor ser parte de este esfuerzo para restaurar la humanidad y los valores estadounidenses a nuestro sistema migratorio. Como hijo de inmigrantes de México, yo sé lo importante que es la urgencia que se necesita para lograr esta reforma migratoria. Tenemos que asegurar que el sueño americano sea accesible para todos. Y este propuesto les ofrece a personas trabajadoras quienes enriquecen nuestras comunidades y han vivido en los Estados Unidos por años, sino décadas, una oportunidad de finalmente obtener su ciudadanía. Uh, a lot of work in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Honored to be proud of this effort. Thank you, Senator Menendez. Thank you, Senator Padilla. And next, it's Senator Klobuchar from Minnesota. Thank you, and thank you so much to Senator Menendez for his longtime leadership. Um, this is an incredible effort, and also Representative Sanchez, uh, my friend, and, and Senator Padilla, as well as all the other sponsors. So I wouldn't be here uh, if we didn't have some compassion in our immigration laws. One of my grandparents came over. Um, they'd had the limit on immigrants of his type he said he was going to Canada and he mysteriously appeared in Wisconsin shortly thereafter. When the immigration authorities caught up with him long after he was married to my uh, grandma and had my mom and her brother, um, he had to have a hearing. And back then uh, they said, oh, you can stay, we're giving you his citizenship. And in my box of my favorite possessions is a picture of him with his little bow tie smiling the day he got his citizenship. And I think everyone in our country uh, deserves that kind of treatment. And um, when I think about 
um, uh, Linda's words about um, why this is different this time. I would lead with the fact uh, that we have a president that put this in right away at the beginning of his term. Uh, that while President Bush tried valiantly to get this done, I was part of that group when I first got to the Senate with Senator Kennedy and we met and we worked and we were just not able to pass it through the Senate despite President Bush's strong support. Then when President Obama came in, I was part of the Judiciary Committee and we did pass that bill through the Senate, but again, it was in his second term. And uh, we over in the House, of course, it ended up getting stuck in John Boehner's freezer next to the frozen peas or something. It never got out of there. And so now I always think third time is a charm uh, to pass major legislation. Why is this different? I just pointed out the difference with the lead in an administration. Secondly, uh, there have been Republicans interested in doing this, and Bob knows that, but they've been gut punched uh, by the previous administration every time they tried to do it. Um, and the third reason is something that's been pointed out. We've now seen a year of our immigrant community on the front line. They're the ones driving the buses. They're the ones holding people's grandparents' hands when they take their last breath in the hospital room. Uh, they're the ones that are in the schools on the front line and working in the convenience stores. And if people were not grateful for our immigrant community before, uh, they better be now. So I combine that plus the obvious economic need for this coming from a state where we have the biggest Somali population, a uh, growing Hispanic population, uh, the biggest Liberian population, the second biggest Hmong population. Um, and there's major Asian populations that will be helped by this bill as well. I think it is really important that we view this not only as the morally right thing to do, not only as part of the American dream, but also as an economic imperative. So thank you for the leaders on this bill. I look forward to working on it in my position on the Judiciary Committee. Um, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Senator. And now, uh, Senator uh, Ben Ray Lujan for his remarks. Well, uh, first off, thank you, Senator Klobuchar. Uh, look, we're all together today to come together and share our thoughts about this long awaited legislation uh, led today by Senator Bob Menendez and Congresswoman Linda Sanchez. Reforms our immigration system and begins to undo the harm that the previous administration caused our immigrant communities. From child separation and ending DACA, the Trump administration's policy shone a light on the broken immigration system and the tragic consequences of years of federal inaction. While President Biden has already taken important steps towards addressing the harm done to immigrant communities by reinstating DACA, ending the bigoted Muslim ban, and stopping the construction of President Trump's ineffective wall, only Congress can take permanent action to bring America's immigration policies into the 21st century. The US Citizenship Act of 2021 puts forth permanent solutions for our immigration system that reflect the vision that President Biden laid out in his plan. An immigration system that values the contribution of immigrants while protecting America's national security and border communities. This legislation keeps families together, strengthens our economy to help America recover and rebuild, creates a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants with deep ties to our communities, including our dreamers and farm workers. It modernizes border security and ports of entry and addresses the root causes of migration from the Northern Triangle region of Central America. This legislation includes priorities from all sides of the political spectrum, the private sector as well from immigrant communities and their allies. I look forward to working alongside all of my colleagues that are here today in the House and in the Senate, led by Senator Menendez and Congresswoman Sanchez and all of my colleagues, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for your work to reform America's immigration system and with that, I want to turn this over and introduce my dear friend and colleague, Chairwoman Zolofgren. Thanks so much, Ben Ray. Um, you know, I've been working on immigration issues for quite some time. I chaired the Immigration Subcommittee in the Judiciary Committee uh, a long time ago. I taught immigration law and practiced immigration law. And I'm here to say that over the years, uh, the law has become less and less functional it doesn't really serve the interests of the United States. And so the screen that I put on various proposals is how does this well serve the United States of America? And this bill solves a lot of problems that don't serve our country. For example, 
we all know uh, that we are dependent on farm workers who are out there in the fields risking their lives, risking uh, the uh, contagion of COVID so we can go to the supermarket and get fruit and vegetables. Well, a majority of those farm workers have been here more than 10 years and a majority of them are undocumented. If we made them all leave, we would not be finding fruits and vegetables in our supermarkets. So we need to have a way for people, how does it serve the United States uh, to not allow people who are working uh, serving our needs to get right with the law. It doesn't. We have a system now where husbands who are legal will be separated from their wives for years for no good reason. How does it serve the interests of the United States to separate an American citizen from his wife for four or five or 10 years waiting for an arbitrary number? This bill fixes that. How does it serve the United States to allocate visas based on the business side? Uh, people who've been approved for a visa, the, the screen is you cannot be offered the visa unless you can prove that there is no American here to do the job that you've been offered. How does it serve the United States to then allocate visas based on where you were born instead of your talents? This eliminates the per country cap on the employment side. You know, I have been uh, working on so many of these items. This bill has many good ideas uh, lifted from other uh, members of Congress and senators who've toiled through the years to improve our legal immigration system. I think this bill will advance that cause and will help America greatly. And with that, I would like to uh, yield back to Robert. Thank you, Congresswoman. And uh, next is Congresswoman Robel Allard. First of all, I just wanna say thank you, President Biden for making immigration reform a top priority. I am so pleased to join my colleagues in the introduction of President Biden's US Citizenship Act of 2021. As Senator Menendez said, this robust immigration reform bill is long overdue. Over my 28 years in Congress, I, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus with my Democratic colleagues have worked hard to reform our broken immigration system. This bill will help ensure immigrants like those in my district who strengthen our economy and add so much of value to our communities are treated with dignity and justice. The bill will help re Congresswoman, you, unite you are frozen. Families to our nation, including those serving in our armed forces and those who are the essential workers on the front lines battling the COVID-19 pandemic. The legislation builds on the principles of the Dream and Promise Act, which I and Congresswomen Nadia Velasquez and Yvette Clark are the original co-sponsors. With the large number of DACA, of the largest number of DACA recipients in my district, I'm pleased the bill improves on the Dream Act by expediting a pathway to citizenship for all DACA eligible youth, as well as TPS and DED recipients. I look forward to working with my colleagues and the Biden administration to pass the US Citizenship Act of 2021 into law. Unas pocas palabras en español. Es un placer poder presentar esta reforma migratoria que ayudará a garantizar que inmigrantes como muchos de mi distrito sean tratados con dignidad Justicia. It is now my pleasure to uh, turn uh, it over to a great leader. Uh, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez. Thank you. Thank you, Lucille. And thank you, Senator Menendez, Congresswoman Sanchez, and all my colleagues who have played such a big role in bringing this legislation to fruition. We are here today because America is a nation of immigrants. 
It was Robert Kennedy who said, and I quote, our attitude towards immigration reflects our faith in the American ideal. For too long, a broken immigration system has failed so many who come to America seeking a better life. And over the last four years, xenophobia and hatred coming from the highest office in our land led to cruel policies like tearing children apart from their parents at the border. Well, today we are here to turn the page on that dark chapter, to finally make headwinds in the decades long battle for humane immigration reform. The US Citizenship Act will provide enhanced pathways to citizenship, keep families together, grow our economy and support asylum seekers. By expanding access to citizenship, we can grow our GDP by over a trillion dollars in the next 10 years. I am proud to stand alongside this powerful group of Congresswomen as one of the closest, and I'm ready to get this bill passed in Congress. Le quiero dar las gracias al Presidente Biden por cumplir y honrar su promesa de campaña de traer legislación para reformar nuestro sistema migratorio en los primeros 100 días. Y yo me honro a unirme al presidente como también al senador Bob Menendez y a la congresista Linda Sánchez para trabajar duro y hacer una realidad, una, un compromiso de humanidad y de compasión que siempre ha caracterizado a los Estados Unidos de América. Gracias. And now let me turn it over to a great leader from California, Congresswoman Judy Chu. Thank you. And I'm so thrilled to be here today as one of the closers for this crucial and historic bill to modernize our immigration system. The US Citizenship Act is a fulfillment of the Biden-Harris administration's day one promise, and it's one I know can make it through Congress. It also includes a number of bills that I have authored, like the No Ban Act, which would prevent future administrations from banning groups of people based on religion ever again through executive orders like the Muslim travel ban. The package puts families first by including provisions from my bill, the Reuniting Families Act, you see, there are currently over 4 million people in the family immigration backlog waiting to reunite with loved ones, 40% of whom are Asian American and Pacific Islander. This bill helps by reducing visa backlogs and expanding the definition of family to include more members. Finally, by including the POWER Act, which I introduced, this bill will protect immigrant workers, including the significant numbers in frontline jobs fighting the COVID-19 pandemic by protecting immigrants who report unfair labor practices from deportation. By putting families and workers first, we will ensure a strong economy. I look forward to working with my fellow closers here today to move this legislation in the house. And now uh, I turn the uh, podium back to Robert Julian. Thank you, Congresswoman. And now uh, the CHC Chairman, Raul uh, Ruiz, will deliver his remarks. Thank you, Senator Menendez and Congresswoman Linda Sanchez for your leadership. I want to thank uh, President Biden for keeping his promise and making immigration reform a priority. For far too long, our country has suffered from a broken immigration system. It is past time that we fix it. As chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and on behalf of all 38 members, CHC is committed to passing immigration reform that will provide many essential workers and taxpaying immigrants an earned pathway to citizenship and allows them to fully contribute to our society, generating economic growth and productivity and keeping programs like Medicare and Social Security solvent. 
Los inmigrantes son una gran parte de nuestra nación y alimentan a, nuestros pa a nuestro país, cuidan a nuestras familias y nos ayudan a mantener seguros. Es sumamente importante que les proporcionemos un camino ganado hacia la ciudadanía para que puedan continuar contribuyendo a nuestra sociedad. The U.S. Citizenship Act is the immigration reform we absolutely need. It restores humanity to our immigration system, prioritizes keeping families together, and provides 21st century solutions for border security. It is time we meet this moment. Ha llegado el momento. The CAC stands ready to do whatever it takes to pass immigration reform. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to Congresswoman Clark. Thank you, Congressman. Good morning, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark, and I proudly represent New York's 9th Congressional District, which is Central and South Brooklyn. I'd like to thank President Biden for his enduring commitment to ushering in a 21st century immigration system that centers human dignity at its core. I'd like to thank Senator Menendez, Congresswoman Sanchez, my colleagues in Congress for your leadership in this moment and members of the press for coming together for this historic moment. As the daughter of Jamaican immigrants, I have a unique familiarity with the need for comprehensive immigration reform. It was not until the passage of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 that immigrants from predominantly Black countries could freely, without facing blatant discriminatory quotas, immigrate to the United States. In fact, I believe that my parents who immigrated to the United States in the 1950s were only able to immigrate to, the, to America because they held British passports as Jamaica was under British control at the time. They came as foreign students and were permitted to adjust their status to permanent residence, enabling them to pursue their American dream. However, today has been nothing short of an American nightmare for many black immigrants. That's the reality. Yet in the face in the, of the cruelty of the Trump administration, they remain hopeful. Our immigration system, which was last updated 30 years ago, is broken, full stop. We want our immigration system to be orderly, fair, and just. And this bill does just that. As chair of the Congressional Caucus's Immigration Task Force, excuse me, the Congressional Black Caucus's Immigration Task Force, I have seen the glaring inequities, blatant racism, vicious xenophobia, and civil rights violations that immigrants face, particularly in immigrant communities of African descent. Donald Trump's administration exacerbated an already and naive immigration strategy that continues to dehumanize and divide. However, this is not just a moral issue. It is an economic one as well. If COVID-19 has taught us nothing, essential workers are the lifeblood of our economy. They risk their lives during a global pandemic to serve, support, and protect American communities. We rely on them during this crisis, and it's time to give them a, a way out of the shadows. This bill, the Biden-Harris administration's vision for fixing our immigration system once and for all, and only Congress can provide immigrants with a path to citizenship. The 11 million, whether they be undocumented, DREAMers, TPS, or DED recipients, deserve mm -hmm. swift, humane, and comprehensive action on their behalf. And I will not relent until our immigration system reflects a modern and equitable approach to this issue. In the immortal words of my dear friend and colleague, the late, great John Lewis, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? I'm proud to co-lead as a closer this momentous legislation. Together, we will build this great nation and together we will heal this great nation. And having said that, 
I'm going to now turn the podium over to the immediate past chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, former speaker of the assembly in the great state of California, the Honorable Karen Bass. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Representative Clark. I am very proud to be here today and to call myself one of the closers. We are going to get this bill on the president's desk and what a difference an election makes. After enduring five years of daily attacks against immigrants, we are putting forward the US Citizenship Act. Over the last four years, we all witnessed horrific immigration policies from the state-sanctioned, state-sponsored child abuse of family separation, leaving kids in cages and parents deported without any way of reuniting with their children. And I have believed that we don't know where many of these children are to this day. To refugees from as far away as Cameroon and countries in Western Africa who are forced to languish in Mexico because the United States government brazenly violated international asylum laws. In the House, I chair the subcommittee on Africa. And because of the conflicts in Cameroon, Cameroonians fly to Ecuador. And from Ecuador, South America, they walk to the border of the United States. In November of 2019, I led a delegation to the border and chaired a congressional field hearing to examine the treatment of African migrants. In a word, it was humane. I heard from people, again, who had walked hundreds of miles to escape oppression, only to languish in a country where they didn't speak the language, either Spanish or English, trying to come across, and we refused to abide by international asylum laws. This bill will help the people that we met and so much more. This bill addresses some of the root causes of migration and prioritizes smart border controls. I'm particularly excited that in this legislation, we increase the numbers of diversity visas. Diversity visas, which were started many years ago, primarily for European immigrants, now is the primary way that immigrants from Africa are able to come to the United States. So I hope that my colleagues in the House and in the Senate join in in co-sponsoring and voting for this bill. And finally, we restore our reputation around the world because it has been an embarrassment the way we have treated people, what the message that has sent to people around the world. Thank you very much. And I am honored to be a part of the closers. I wanna thank President Biden. I wanna thank Senator Menendez and Representative Sanchez for your leadership. We gotta get this done. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Uh, this is Robert from Senator Menendez's office. Uh, so a couple of ground rules for the Q&A section. Um, if you can please write your questions um, in the chat function, um, I will be trying to do my best to include both English and Spanish questions. So we're showing some love to, to both English and Spanish press. Um, so if you have questions you would like asked, please um, start typing them in the chat function um, and I will get us started with the first question. Uh, so the first question is for, um, will be in Spanish um, and it's asking, hemos visto mucha eh, división uh, a pesar de esto, ha recibido el apoyo de algún republicano ¿Y cómo piensan poder ganarse eh, ese apoyo de, de, de sus colegas republicanos, eh, Senador Menéndez o Congresista Sánchez? Bueno, no me empezar. Eh, gracias por la pregunta. Eh, primero de todo, eh, eh, hemos visto, eh, con, hemos tenido conversaciones eh, con colegas republicanos. Eh, varios de ellos tienen intereses de elementos de la ley y parte de la negociación va a ser bueno si si por ejemplo si estás interesado en los obreros agrícolas tienes que agregar su voto para otros eh, que también queremos legalizar eh, si quieres eh, tienes el interés de la alta tecnología y las visas para eso pues bien pero tienes que poner tu voto para otros elementos así que estamos en conversaciones eh, 
eso es lo mismo que el 2013, cuando yo fui parte del grupo de ocho. Y eh, empezamos con muy pocos eh, republicanos, pero fina, finalizamos con 68 votos en el Senado. Así que estas conversaciones, que en este momento son privadas porque estamos tratando de llegar al momento en el cual ellos se sientan confortables en apoyar la ley. Pero sé que la congresista Sánchez puede hablarle también de que hubo eh, en la Cámara de Representantes, cuando la Cámara pasó, pasó varios elementos significativos eh, de lo que estamos proponiendo hoy, estuvieron un, un voto nutrido eh, de, de colegas republicanos en la Cámara. Thank you so much, Senator. And Congresswoman Ted Hansen also has that same question in English. So if you want to um, address it um, for our English uh, press as well, that would be wonderful. Sure, I'll uh, take a stab at that in English. So clearly, I think the American people and members of Congress and the Senate recognize that the status quo is just not sustainable. Our immigration system is broken. And there have been attempts over the years um, to try to tackle that. But I think this time there are circumstances that make this possible. And that is we have a president and an administration that is willing to put political muscle behind making sure that we can get this across the finish line. Um, I have a group, as I introduced earlier, of closers. They are talented, smart uh, members of Congress that have been working on these immigration issues for years. They have relationships with folks in uh, all corners of our caucus, and they are going to be going out and having those conversations with members about what is in the bill, trying to address concerns, taking input. And of course, the bill introduction today is the starting point. It's the president's vision. We all know that when you introduce a bill, oftentimes the end result is not exactly the starting result. So there will be uh, you know, opportunities for us to uh, talk with our Republican colleagues and educate them about what is in the bill, address concerns and modify. But we are confident that we can get this done. The American people support this, it's long overdue. Millions have been waiting for relief and it will be a tremendous benefit to our economy and our country in the long run when we get this bill through. So we are all working uh, uh, doggedly and determinedly to make sure that this happens. It, it is different this time. I feel the excitement. I feel the sense of possibility. Um, and it's just a matter of working with our colleagues to get it across the finish line. Great, thank you, Congresswoman. So the, the next question is regarding the, the crisis of migrant deaths um, at the, the Southern Arizona border and, and just a border in general. Uh, this, this bill provides several provisions on uh, addressing the root causes of migration. It also includes um, a, a provision on rescue beacons as, as one mechanism to best address the, the on the ground measure. Um, how did you uh, go about deciding on some of these pieces that are included in the bill? Um, if either one of you would like to, to take a stab at, at answering that question. Well, I would just say that this is a very common sense vision that the president has for how we improve uh, our broken immigration system. And he identifies certain, um, you know, certain concerns that need to be addressed that our humanity um, compels us to address. Obviously the deaths at the border, the, um, the rescue beacons are, are an important part of that, but so is, you know, professional training for CBP and having, you know, medical training, having uh, humanitarian standards for those that are detained, particularly for children and vulnerable populations. All of that is contemplated in this bill. But I think what's most exciting about this bill is that it seeks to really get at the root causes um, that forces people to migrate north, forces people to flee um, and come north. And it's a comprehensive four-year plan that the president envisions interagency, um, working with the international community and working with the private sector to try to reduce violence and corruption and poverty um, in Central American countries. So I'm very excited about this bill. And I, I, I think many of the provisions speak to issues that have um, that we have seen that cannot go unaddressed. So um, very excited about, again, the broad scope of this bill and what it and what it can achieve. Robert, let me add to con the Congresswoman's uh, remark 
works on this. And then also I would uh, say that we should invite our other colleagues uh, if they feel uh, that they want to join in in any of the answers that they should be welcome to do so. Uh, first of all, what are some of the fundamental differences about this approach? Number one is we deal with root causes of migration as the Congresswoman was me, uh, particularly from Central America. And we fund the president's four-year plan to increase assistance to El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, uh, conditioned of course on their ability uh, to reduce the corruption, violence uh, and uh, poverty uh, that people uh, have caused people to flee. Look, if my choice as a Central American citizen is to stay and die or stay and see my daughter raped or see my son forcibly put into a gang, I'm gonna flee. And so until we deal with those root causes, we are gonna continuously have a challenge. Secondly, it creates safe and legal channels for people to seek protection so that they can apply for legal status in Central America instead of making the dangerous journey north. It cracks down on bad actors uh, by enhancing the ability to prosecute individuals involved in smuggling, narcotics and trafficking networks uh, who are responsible uh, for much of the violence and the flows that come into the country. And uh, yes, the beacon is only one example of modernizing and managing the border effectively with technology that enhances our ability not only to be humane, but also to detect contraband and counter transnational criminal networks. Since, uh, for example, most illicit drugs uh, are ultimately uh, taken over through legal uh, ports uh, of entry. Uh, which we do a poor job uh, of using technology to, in, in, to in, intercept. So these are just some of the elements in which we deal with uh, the challenges of what drives people to come to the United States. How do we legalize the process uh, in a way that, regularize, I should say, the process uh, in a way that makes far more sense, is far more humane, that causes less challenges at the border, and also deals with some of the border issues that are increasingly uh, important. Bob, uh, if I could just add, um, I was gonna say everything you just said, but I wanted to add that when you look at the um, four years of the Trump administration, it was just a recipe for uh, not being able to have a cogent foreign policy with these countries, uh, with El Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras, uh, because they, I remember when President Trump said, I'm cutting off all aid, and then his people like, no, that's not what's going to work. And I think what's so great about this plan uh, and about the Biden plan is it's uh, a four-year plan, and it's conditioned, of course, increased assistance conditioned on uh, what they will do to reduce the corruption, violence, and poverty. Um, and as Bob pointed out, this idea that you can apply for um, help and for asylum in the home country is also really helpful. So thank you. Thank you, Senator. So the next question is um, for for Senator Menendez. You know, there, there, there's a lot of questions about you know the the support this will get. Um, from Republicans, you know, are there any Republicans that you have spoken with so far? What have been their overall reactions? And and secondly, um, you know, along with this question is, you know, if we get to a certain point where um, there are concerns about whether Republicans will come in, would we can something like reconciliation be on the table for trying to get this passed? Well, let me take the first part of that question. And, and so, yes, I have had conversations uh, with various of our Republican colleagues. Uh, many of them have uh, interests in parts of the legislation. Uh, many of them are representatives of ag states, and so they care very much about the elements on farm workers. Others come uh, from high tech areas, so they care very much about the visa uh, opportunities, uh, like the, the ones I mentioned in my comics about somebody passing, uh, graduating from one of our great universities, particularly in the STEM fields and being able uh, to automatically uh, qualify uh, to stay in the United States to do critical work to continue uh, us at the uh, apex of the curve of intellect and innovation. Uh, others are interested um, with reference to, to uh, other forms uh, of reform, particularly, so for example, seafood industry, poultry, uh, meat packing, 
So uh, the question for them is, yes, you want that part, but what are you willing to join in in order to get that with other elements that uh, are needed for uh, some broader reform? And so those are the conversations that are going on. Of course, dreamers always bring, uh, it's the motherhood and apple pie of immigration reforms. It brings a lot of people to that. Uh, so uh, these are all conversations working towards understanding and putting the pieces of a puzzle together as to what we can do so that hopefully we can get to the point that we got in, uh, you know, uh, the, the last time we did reform in 2013, that got us 68 votes in the Senate. Now, it's not going to be easy. We recognize that, which goes to the second part of the question. So uh, I think that what we are all saying, we are holding the vision of what immigration reform should look like in this legislation. It's President Biden's vision. It's a vision that we share uh, and that we want to make uh, as robustly as possible into reality. But what we are looking for is robust reform at the end of the day. We want to make sure that we maximize the ability uh, of finding pathways for people to make themselves right with the law, to go through a criminal background check, to pay their taxes, to do what is necessary to earn their way uh, towards uh, the possibility of permanent residency, and then later on towards citizenship. So uh, if there are moving vehicles where parts of this uh, can happen, I think all of us would certainly say we want to see, you know, uh, us uh, attach significant elements to a moving vehicle that can make it happen. Uh, if we can get certain elements of this uh, standing up and passed uh, individually, both in the House and the Senate, um, that's great. Uh, if uh, there are challenges to other parts of this overall vision uh, that can be done possibly through the second reconciliation, it's something that many of us have already raised. And while it would be a uh, question of first impression uh, in terms of reconciliation, uh, I think there may be strong arguments to, to make that obviously has very significant budget effects. So we are not foreclosing, and I'll let uh, Congresswoman Sanchez, who's leading this in the House with her colleagues, uh, speak to their process, but we are not foreclosing uh, any pathway into which we can achieve robust uh, immigration reform. I guess I would just add uh, really briefly that we are pursuing a all of the above strategy, if you will. All options are on the table and we hope to pass robust uh, immigration reform, but there are other great immigration bills that we also uh, will be taking up and hopefully passing as well. So we think that there is increased um, uh, ability to get real reform done. The more vehicles that we that we uh, that we pass and 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 move forward. So we are, you know, pursuing robust uh, immigration reform and um, uh, including everything, all pieces, everything together. So, but our fo our focus is most definitely on the U.S. Citizenship Act moving moving forward today. Also, uh, Senator Durbin is now chairing the Judiciary Committee, and so um, it will be a lot easier to get hearings. Um, and uh, as you know, he's been a longtime advocate for immigration reform, and Senator Grassley um, supported the last bill uh, that we've been talking about. And um, I'm, I'm not naive about our issues with some of the Republicans on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, we've got quite a group on there. Uh, but at the same time, we do have some people on there who have supported portions of this in the past. And one more caveat to Senator Klobuchar, Senator Padilla is the chair of the Immigration Subcommittee. That is exactly Detroit. right. Thank you, Bob. And he's uh, we're proud to have him as a new member. Uh, so I have, uh, I think we have time for just one more question and, and ideally if we can get um, parts of this answered in both English and Spanish. Um, so the question is, are, are, are you willing to include uh, border security enhancements or other Republican demands into this legislation? What would be off the table or unacceptable? Ideally, if, if, uh, if we can provide a, a response in both English and Spanish, uh, that would be greatly helpful for our friends in the Spanish press corps. Um, I'll attempt in English if Bob will follow in Spanish. Um, so this bill does contemplate investments at all of our ports of entry because um, contraband and smuggling um, occurs 
not just along the southern border, but we need smarter processes, more effective technology uh, for making sure that we are keeping things out of the country that we do not want in the country. Um, there are new provisions to crack down on smuggling networks and contraband, um, but there is contemplated within this bill a number of things that will help us manage um, the, our, our southern border, but all of our ports of entry. And uh, we feel very confident that we can be working more efficiently rather than um, being fixated on vanity projects like the wall, which have proven to be ineffective. If you, if you think about it, um, the last four years, um, we did nothing to address the root causes. And there was every kind of restrictive, harmful, you know, uh, border uh, fixated uh, uh, policies pursued by the Trump administration and none of it has worked. None of it has worked. Um, so we have a chance to be very thoughtful here and to really utilize um, better, more efficient tools at our disposal to make sure that we're managing our border and doing it in a, in a safe way, but in a humane way as well. Well, let me add first a little bit in English and then I'll, I'll say in Spanish. Uh, look, the president of the United States spent 36 years in the United States Senate. I think he has a sense of what it takes to negotiate uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, I agree with the Congresswoman. We, we have a significant border elements here, both in technology and border crossings. And, you know, the reality is, is that we already have more money being spent on border patrol than the combination of all other federal uh, law enforcement agencies put together, put together. So we start with the recognition that over the last four years, there's been an enormous number of resources at the border. Uh, and so if you take that into account and you take the type of technology efforts we are talking about and the prosecution of bad actors in a more vigorous way, uh, I think it deals a lot with the border security, but we are always willing to listen to what our colleagues have to say in order to get to the prize goal. Of course, uh, the more you ask for, the more you got to give. And so we want to see a robust, you know, movement towards uh, those 11 million. Now, very briefly in Spanish. Eh, si sí, estamos dispuestos de negociar, el presidente de los Estados Unidos se pasó 36 años en el Senado de los Estados Unidos, sabe lo que es necesario para negociar, para... Uh, finalmente conseguir los 60 votos como mínimo que hace falta en el Senado de los Estados Unidos. Pero empezamos con el reconocimiento de que hemos hecho mucho en esta ley. En primer lugar, uh, para enfocarnos en la seguridad de la frontera, ayuda tecnológica que no se ha usado. La realidad es que hay más uh, patrulleros fronterizas que en cualquier otro tiempo en nuestra historia. Por cierto, todos los recursos que se, que se, que se, se ponen en el presupuesto de la patrulla fronteriza eh, es más que todos los eh, cuerpos policíacos federales eh, en su presupuesto. Así que es muy significativo. Ahora, eh, la realidad es que también en esta ley que proponemos, eh, empezamos con las causas reales de la violencia en Centroamérica. Eh, eh, ponemos los fondos necesarios que el presidente ha llamado para tener un plan de cuatro años para estabilizar Centroamérica para que primero de todo las personas no tienen que huir a los Estados Unidos. Número dos, creamos canales legales y seguros donde las personas pueden aplicar en sus países para que no tengan que llevarse el viaje al norte un viaje que es muy inseguro, peligroso, sin tener la seguridad de que van a ser aceptados. Número tres, eh, tenemos una serie de secciones de la ley que fortalece eh, los esfuerzos de ir en contra eh, de las maras, los narcotraficantes, lo que, la, eh, los coyotes y lo demás, que es de suma importancia. Número cuatro, eh, como ya he dicho, eh, manejamos la frontera en una forma mucho más eficaz, incluyendo de que la realidad es que la mayoría de los narco, el narcotráfico que viene a los Estados Unidos viene por cruzamientos legales eh, eh, y que actualmente no estamos haciendo lo necesario para realizar eso. Así que yo creo que en todo este sentido es, tenemos eh, un, una ley y una propuesta eh, que sí, siempre eh, uno está dispuesto de negociar, 
pero realizando que los hemos enfrentado a los temas más importantes, vigorosamente, en una forma que creemos que puede crear seguridad para los Estados Unidos, prosperidad para los Estados Unidos, una mejor economía para los Estados Unidos y por último, la humanidad y la dignidad que los Estados Unidos siempre ha tenido en su plan de inmigración. Thank you, Senator. So with that, that's all the time we have for questions for now. Uh, luckily, a lot of the reporters had a lot of similar questions that we've been able to get to. And, and to be the bearer of good news, which I know is the, the question everyone wants answered is, when are you getting the bill text? Um, so both Congresswoman Sanchez's office and, and our office, um, we are aiming to send the press release with the bill text for both the House, the House and Senate versions by around 1 p.m. We will also include a link to the full recording of this presser, uh, especially for our friends in, 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 uh, on TV who may need to clip and use for, for different packages and, and coverage. Um, thank you all so, so much for, for being here and let's, let's get this done. Hi everybody, let's do it, let's do it. All right. All right. It's our time, it's our time. All right.